French President Emmanuel Macron and British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak met on Friday in Paris for a summit aimed at mending relations following post-Brexit tensions, as well as discussion of further support for Ukraine. Emmanuel Macron has been criticized for failing to echo comments by Rishi Sunak that Ukraine must win the war against Russia, opting instead to say that Vladimir Putin must not prevail in Eastern Europe. In a speech alongside the Prime Minister in Paris, Mr. Macron, in effect, repeated his message made throughout the last year that a European relationship with Russia should be maintained despite Putin's brutal invasion. Last month, the French president said their military support of Ukraine was intended to bring Russia back to the table and build a lasting peace, suggesting total defeat was not their ambition. The comments run contrary to many NATO states, who believe that Putin has crossed one too many red lines and that he can longer be considered amenable. Speaking to reporters in Paris, Mr. Macron claimed the French shared the same sentiment and resolve with the UK. He then said, Russia cannot, must not win this war. We have been helping Ukraine and the people of Ukraine from day one to resist. Humanitarianly, militarily and economically, we are doing everything so this war doesn't spread globally. We have decided on concrete action together on the training of the Ukrainian military and high-value segments and together we want to prepare the coming weeks and months with a shared conviction that we will have to find an outcome to this conflict and place our Ukrainian friends in the best situation possible. Macron also spoke of building a lasting and acceptable peace in line with international law in the interests of the Ukrainian people. Rishi Sunak, moments beforehand, spoke of Britain affording Ukraine a decisive advantage on the battlefield to help them win this war. While the difference between the comments of the two leaders may seem pedantic, commentators on social media have suggested that they are not at all on the same line. They implied that the latest round of remarks by Mr. Macron further demonstrated that he is still hoping to maintain some semblance of a relationship with Vladimir Putin despite his invasion. France is the sixth most prolific supporter of Ukraine, behind the US, Britain, Germany, Canada and Poland, in that order. But unlike the leaders of most of their fellow NATO members, Mr. Macron has been accused of misunderstanding the war and the plight of Ukrainians over his continued emphasis on being open to talking with Putin, as well as the importance of ending this war at the negotiating table. For Ukrainians, the aphorism that you don't negotiate with terrorists applies without question to Vladimir Putin whose invasion has led to the deaths of tens of thousands of their people, both on the front lines and hundreds of miles behind. Mikhailo Podoliak, an advisor to Ukrainian President Mr. Zelensky, intimated last year that Mr. Macron's willingness to speak to Putin and maintain a relationship with Russia post-war amounted to looking beyond the tragedy affecting their country.
Last month, Mr. Macron told a French outlet, I do not think, as some people do, that we must aim for a total defeat of Russia. Those observers want to, above all else, crush Russia. That has never been the position of France and it will never be our position. The president suggested that Ukrainian military efforts, supported by allies, were intended, above all, to bring Russia back to the table and build a lasting peace. That same month, U.S. President Joe Biden, speaking from the Ukrainian President Maria Zinke Palace in Kyiv, pledged to support Ukraine, for as long as it takes, because, freedom is priceless, in comments that were viewed as more respectful of the nightmare facing the defending nation. While Mr. Macron's comments have an ostensibly negligible impact on their financial support of Ukraine, it speaks to a rhetorical discord among the Western European powers, including perhaps Germany and Italy, and the Eastern member states, alongside Britain and the U.S. For the latter group of nations, Putin has crossed yet another red line, one from which he cannot return. For the former group, retribution and reintegration might not be beyond the horizon.